to the Most High God, we say, call halal, abanawa, yahawah, bahashem, hamashiach, yahawah, that's all praises to the Most High God, who you know as God, real name is Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We are the Hebrew Israelites, we are God's chosen people, according to biblical prophecies, according to maps, according to uh, uh, dispersions, according to the diaspora, according to archaeology and history, all right? So just so you know, the whole time, America has been calling God's chosen people three-fifths of a human. Right. Just so you know, the whole time of America's inception, they have, they have uh, you, you guys good, you guys good. They have uh, uh, lessened the value of the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, right? They have called us three-fifths of a human. They have called us all types of bywords and proverbs. All right, give me that in the curse of Deuteronomy 28, uh, the proverbs and bywords, right? And it's our job to come out here, all right, and wake our people up through the spirit of the Most High God. That's all we are here to do. We are only out here for our people and our people only, right? Give me Matthew 121. Let's go ahead and uh, get that to start it off. You got the proverb and word? Bring it out, King. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Come on, you know. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A what? An astonishment. Start at 15, it's a lot. Because we got to take this Bible slowly. See, your Christian pastors have taught you a dogmatic doctrine that God loves everybody and that Jesus Christ died for everybody. But the Most High God, this same Bible calls the other nations spittle. The so the so called uh, uh, other nations, right, have to understand that God doesn't love everybody. He killed the firstborn of every Egyptian in the in the in the city of Egypt. Good. Right? This actually happened. Right? The same God that killed the Assyrian army, right, who was under the army of Sennacherib. Right. All these things are actual historical facts. Right? And the people will not tell you that. Your pastor would not tell you that. Right, start at 15, King. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Come on. But it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken. If we will not. If not hearken. If we will not hearken, right? The Most High God has given the so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, man, woman, and child an ultimatum. You have a choice, brother. You got a choice, right? You gonna listen to the Most High God or not, right? Are you gonna hearken to the Most High God or not? Right, and every time I'm walking down these streets and I'm seeing my people getting killed, getting castrated on TV, right. a public lynching, right, and all the all the atrocities that come on our people, we look at our people, the so-called Black Hispanic Native American, as making the wrong decisions in life as a nation, right? As a nation, we have made the wrong decisions in life, and the Most High sent us out here, right, in the spirit of His Son Hamashiach Yahushai. For us to come out here and cry aloud, spare not, to lift up our voice like the Most High told us to do. Right? right? Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Come on. To observe. To what? To, to observe. We got to observe, right? Read. To do uh -huh. all his commandments. We got to do all the Most High's commandments. If you look at the black man's life, do they keep the Most High's commandments? Uh -huh. If you look at the black man's life, look at his music, look at our way of life, look at what makes us cool. Is that making the Most High proud? Uh -huh. Right? Is that keeping the commandments the Most High gave our people? Uh -huh. Right? Pimping out your women, murdering your brother and your sisters, right? Not knowing who you are. This is all going against the Most High's words, right? Read on, King. To observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, Come on. which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses, all these what? All these curses. Now, when you look at the black man's life, when you look at the Hispanic man's life, when you look at the Native American man's life, right? The Haitian. Go to Haiti and you tell me you're not under curses. Right. What? Go to certain parts of Jamaica, Trenchtown. Right, go to all the United States in every ghetto and every hood in America, you're gonna see uh, the calamity, the aftermath of not keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That's right. right? Which goes to show you that if the most high is punishing the black man for his iniquity, then what does that mean that the so-called white man is? Right? How does the so-called white man and the Arab man can do all his iniquities and not have the same uh, indignation that the so-called black man has, right. right? How does that happen? How is he's the so-called Asian American able to walk around and not have any captivity right in the Americas? It don't make sense, right? Because the Most High is only here to judge his own children. Right. The Most High only judges his children, right? These other gods is for the other nations, right? The right. Most High gave his laws, statutes, and commandments to the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American. And as a result, 
right? You don't know who you are. You don't even know your nationality. You don't know who you identify with. Right. The black man calls himself a color and a crayon box. Where is the color of black? Where is the nation black? What language is black, right? You gotta go back and do your history and a man named Johann Blumenbach gave you the color white and no one's white, just like no one's black. These are all negative and positive connotations that has perpetuated and, 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 and has our people in a mental bondage. And meanwhile, the people that benefit from being called white call themselves white and they think that they're pure. That's right. Has the so-called white man been pure to the so-called Native American in America, uh -huh. right? Has the so-called white man been good to the Puerto Rican, Cuban, uh -huh. right? The Dominican, uh -huh. what about the uh, Haitian, right? Everywhere they go, there's been what? Rape, rob, murder. It's the same pattern right. everywhere you go. This is not hate speech. This is just true facts. That's right. Right? Hey, the Bible says, as a man soweth, that shall he also reap. But what has the white man sowed here in America and anywhere he goes? What has the white man sowed? Anything positive. Right? And even if you believe in karma, right, then you must believe that something bad is going to happen to the nation of the so-called white person whose name is Edom. Right? Read on that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 37, and thou shall become an astonishment. A what? An astonishment. And who's, the, who's the most astonished man in America? Right, read on. A proverb uh -huh. and a byword. Who is the proverb and a byword, right? Who's, who, who has the negative connotation with every single thing, right? What do we signify black people eating? Chicken and watermelon. Just about a month ago, a brother said, uh, what does it mean to be black? And he said, what? Watermelon. Right. Remember that? Right over there. Fried chicken and watermelon, right? And his own self said that, right? Chitlins and collard greens, right? Read on. And a byword uh -huh. among all nations. Among who? Among all nations. So not just the white man calls the so-called black man all these proverbs and bywords. Not just the so-called Asian man calls the so-called black man the proverbs and the bywords. It's all nations. All nations have, has, has had a hand in our captivity throughout the annals of time. Throughout the history of time, the Elamite, right? The so-called East Indian had our people in captivity, right? right? The so-called African had us in captivity, right? The so-called uh, 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 white man had us in captivity, right? The so-called Arab had us in captivity, and they still keep us in captivity, right, by putting the proverbs and the bywords. And it's time for our people, especially in these last days, with everybody waking up, everybody coming to their nationality, all the so-called black man is coming back to his God, coming back to his language, coming back to his laws. That means that some nation has to fall. Right. And it's this nation right here that we're standing on, right here, right now. That's right. right? America will burn, thus said the Most High God. Right? Why? Because that as a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's right. And America has done nothing but sold evil calamity. America signed their own death certificate when, when they go and bomb Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Right. right? Read on, King. And thou shalt become an astonishment a proverb and a byword uh -huh. among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. So lead thee, right? Give me verse 64. Boom. Verse 64. Come on. And the Lord shall scatter thee. So what? Shall scatter thee. So you're looking at the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. James tells you who you're talking to in James 1 and 1 to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. See, uh, contrary to your pastor, contrary to these theologians out here, contrary to these guys on the street, that do not read the Bible in fullness and totality, we could come out here and make sense on this Bible only being written for the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, the Israelite man, woman, and child, right? Read on. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. And you're looking at Israelites that are scattered from one end of the earth up into the other. You have Israelites in India. You have Israelites in China. You have Israelites in Singapore. You have Israelites all over, right? Now watch this. Read what you got, King. There's a book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. Come on. And she shall bring forth a son. And she shall what? Bring forth a son. So, so the angel is telling Mary that you're going to have a son. Well, actually telling Joseph that your wife Mary, right? He's going to, you're going to have a son, right? And everybody knows this story, especially during the time of the so-called nativity, right? Such the, the time of Christmas and all these pagan holidays that 
that people try to make up to show that uh, uh, Christ being somewhat uh, of a deity going back to Sabiramus and Tammuz and Nimrod. That's what it goes back to. They try to make these things mix, right? She shall bring forth a son, right? Read on. And thou shalt call his name Yahweh. Read it as it's written. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. And they shall call him Jesus, right? That's this right. is your Lord and Savior. All these white folks and all these other nations claim that they believe in Jesus Christ, right? Now watch this. Read. For he shall save his people. No, all people. His people. No, everybody. His people. He shall save his people, right? Come on. From their sins. From their what? From their sins. Let's get the definition of sin. Because uh, uh, contrary to what you believe, right? Sin is only uh, uh, stratified or stratified by one nation. Right. Only one nation can technically qualify for sin. Right. Now we have universal sin, of course. You have murder, you have rape, you have incest. These are universal sins. Right. But when it comes to these laws being broken, it only goes back to one group of people. Right. You hold on something? Uh, yeah, Jeremiah. Too. Bring it up. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Come on up. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. O house of who? O, o house, house of Israel. Israel. See, all through this Bible, right, the Bible is written to the Israelites, That's for right. the Israelites, by the Israelites. That's right. Right? All these laws are written to the Israelites, by the Israelites, right? Ordained and administered by the Most High God. Right, so why is the so-called black man running around trying to get Christmas gifts right. on December 24th, December 23rd, teaching his children about a fat white man coming down the closet of the damn chimney, right? A lot of times our people don't even have chimneys. We don't even have a home, right? See, the, see the, 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 the way that the white man sets America up is it rewards those that are in favor. It rewards the ones that are financially favored, right? And then what does it do against the ones that have no money? No, no actual money, no actual power, no actual might. It identifies them, right? It, 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 it chastises them. You don't have a house, so Santa's not going to be a good little, you're not a good little boy to Santa, right? So he's not coming down your chimney, right? You see how, and then the black kid, Tyrone, comes to school, and he didn't get nothing for Christmas. And he grows up hating himself, right? Because of his living situation. But who put you in that living situation, right? What nation of people uh, 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 marginalized and, and actually get, uh, defunded your neighborhood, black man, right? The guy that you want to be like, right. right? It's time to get rid of Christmas, right? It's time to exchange the pagan holidays that they put on our people year in and year out, generation in and generation out. And it's time to come back to the laws, statutes, and commandments that the Most High gave us. Right. Come back to the feast days and high holy days that God gave us. Right. God never ordained Christmas in the Bible. You don't see Christmas in the Bible, right? You don't see Easter in the Bible, right? You don't see any of Mother's Day in the Bible. What about you, brother? What's your nationality? What's your nationality? African-American, let me show you who you really are in this Bible, brother. You good? You see that? People, people think that they're good. Our men think that they're good in this, in this, in this world. In this land, they think that they're good. There's nothing good for you, brother. This nation is not nothing good for you. This nation has nothing good for our people. Right. Nothing good for our people, right? Which is why we must separate ourselves from this nation that hates and oppresses that's, us. That's right. We gotta separate ourselves from the ways of America. We gotta separate from the ideas that America puts on our people. And Christmas is one of them, damn it. Right? right? Come on. Right. I'm gonna get to the point. Come on. Verse three. Get it? For the customs of the people are vain. And, hey, and our people follow the customs of vain Right? Give me, um, you hold something? You could drop that. Give me, uh, um, give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, right? The custom of the people are vain, right? How can you lead this nation and you actually follow the customs of the people you're supposed to teach? Right. Right? How does that happen? How do I be a lawgiver and a king when the people that I'm supposed to be teaching, I'm, I'm actually following them, right? Come on. For one, Cutteth a tree out of the forest, uh -huh. the work of the hands of the workmen uh -huh. with the axe. With the what? With the oh, axe. Come on. They deck it with silver and with gold. They do what? They deck it with silver and with gold. So if you look at this picture right here, you're seeing what we're talking about right here. Right here in the Bible, you see a Christmas tree being described. This is nothing new. They've always had Christmas trees, right? Christmas did not start when Christ was born. That's, right. a, that's a lie that your pastor has told you year in and year out for the America to make money. Right? Come on. 
They fasten it with nails and with hammers uh -huh. that it move not. And that's that, that's that tree sitting in that base, standing straight up, right? Now give me Jeremiah 2 and give me verse, uh, I want verse 26, I believe, or 21, right? It talks about that green, that green tree that, that um, 20, I think, let me see There's a book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Come on. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. See, the Most High is called the so called Black, Hispanic, and Native American, the Israelite, God's chosen people, the real Jews, right? The real Jews of the Bible are black. That's right. Right? Contrary to what you didn't know, the real Jews are black, right? right? The Israelites are black, right. right? Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. He did what? Hath chosen thee. He chose us. The Most High chose the so-called black man, right? Read. To be a special people unto himself, uh -huh. above all people. Above what? All people that are upon the face of the earth. We on. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than many than any people. For ye were the fullest of all people. We were the what? Fewest of all people. And the so-called black man is the fewest in this nation today. This is what it means to be called three-fifths of a human, right? You three-fifths of a human because the nations called you that. And you want to uh, you wanna align yourself. You want to migrate yourself. You want to be buddy-buddy with the nation that hates your guts, man. Right. right? And you are fewest of all people. We're the youngest nation. We're the youngest nation, but we are also the mightiest nation. Right. We're the strongest nation. Right? right? Because we can take four or five, six hundred years of oppression. Four or five, six hundred years of, of, of rape, robbery, and murder, right? And still come out on top and know who we are, Bring right? And teach our people that you're not black in America. Brother, you're not black out here in America, brother. You were here, you were Israelite according to the Bible, brother. Right. And it's time for our people to wake up and come back to their heritage. Come back to what the Most High gave you. Give me Matthew 7 and 6. You can drop that. Give me Matthew 7 and 6. Read that again. Read on. The Lord did not set his love upon you or nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people come on but because the lord loveth you did what the, because the lord loveth you and the most high is talking to israelites right here he's not talking to all nations the most high said he loves the israelites he loves god's chosen people he loves the jews the jews are black right if you haven't heard the whole night we're talking about our people being God's chosen people, right? He said, the Lord, the Lord loveth you, black man. The Lord loveth you, black woman. Stop trying to put blonde hair in your head, trying to be like the oppressor, right? right? The black man must, must come back to his heritage, right? The black man must now come back and teach his family God's laws, statutes, and commandments, right? That's what it comes down to. Put the pork away, put the shrimp down. Put the crab lobster. America has told you, right, how to kill yourself. Right. America gives you a free lesson on how the black man can kill himself and commit spiritual, mental, and physical suicide. Right. Right? Read on. Right. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. To who? Unto your fathers. So what's the oath that the most high gave the fathers? Right? Finish that out and we're going to get Genesis 12. Read have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. And the Most High brought us out of captivity with a mighty hand. That means it was violence, destruction, chaos. Babies had to die for our people to get liberation. Right? right? Young kids had to die for our people to get liberation. Wow. If you got a question, did she ask him a question? You got a yeah, question? Yeah, she said, she, she said uh, because, because you was talking about the dietary law, we couldn't eat dinner. We couldn't eat dinner? Yeah. I don't understand where she gets that understanding from, right? The Bible tells us what to eat and what not to eat, right? You see how these other nations are trying to actually cling to the word of the Lord, right? Come on. And redeem you out of the house of bond, man, from the, the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Against who? Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Pharaoh right here is Joe Biden. Pharaoh out here is, is all these politicians that make laws to kill our people. Right? To put our children through hell. Right? <laughs> Pharaoh's putting our children through hell. Right? Now give me that in Genesis 12. Give me Genesis 12. Right? 
and start at verse uh, verse three. Give me Genesis twelve and three, because what's the oath that the Most High gave to the, the to the to the man Abraham, who's our forefather? Why well, our forefather Abraham got an oath from the Most High God, right? Our forefather Isaac got an oath from the Most High God, and our forefather Jacob got that same oath from the Most High God. The Most High is only dealing with the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? The Shemites, the Shemitic people group that you see right here, the real Shemites, right? Give me verse uh, verse three. There's a book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 3. Come on. And I will bless them that bless thee. And I will what? Bless them uh -huh. that bless thee. Now I'll stop right there. Has all nations blessed Israel? Uh -huh. Now we just uh, said earlier, right, that all nations has had us in captivity. So, so they don't qualify. All nations are not going to get blessed until they come back and bow the knee, right, and kiss the boot of the so-called black man. Right? I will bless them that bless thee. Right? Read and I will bless them that bless thee uh -huh. and curse him that curse thee. And all nations had us in captivity, so they had us in the curse. Right? right? As a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yeah. Right? Read on. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Come on. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, uh -huh. and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when, word, when he departed word. out of Haran. Come on. And Abraham took, come, verse 6, uh -huh. and Abraham passed through the land into the place of Shechem. You see that? So Abraham went to Sichem, right, which is where you go into modern day Israel. Abraham went to modern day Israel, right? And got more blessings and more promises and more covenants given to him, right? Come on. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shittim, unto the place, so like, unto the plain of Moreh, and the Canaanite was then in the land. All right, so so uh, you got a question, miss? You can, you can come and ask us questions. We don't bite. It's not, it's not art, right? This is not art. Seeing black men hanging from trees is not art. There's nothing artistic about that, right? No, you t we're talking about all this, right? This is not art. Our people are getting castrated, right? You know, our people had to have babies ripped out of their wombs as they hung upside down. Right. And they were so-called white men. Hold on, I'm finishing. I mean, I'm talking. Hold on. Hold on. Because the so-called white woman was a part of that. Right? The white woman was also a part of that. Women was a part of the lynching of black women. So where was the feminist movement then? Right. right? You see how the feminist movement only works when it's your people that want rights? Right? Because the same black woman that was hanging from trees was put up there by the so-called white woman. Right? right? By, by uh, false accusations. This is recorded history that your people have done. Right? And they got to answer for that. You got to answer for that. Your forefathers have made a bill that your ass can't cash. That's right! Right? You see how they want to come up here and call black men hanging from trees art? There's nothing artist about it. But you know what? You would expect that from the so-called devil, man. Right. right? The devil will say that. The devil will call that art. I we call that. that atrocity. We call that uh, 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 pain in our lifetime. Because if I said anything about the, the, the you wish community, what am I going to get slapped with? Fines. Right? Four years of oppression versus five, six hundred years in counting of oppression. Right? They, hey, hey, the score against us is astronomical, right? But our people just want to make a mockery of our own calamity, right? This is why we call it what a proverb and a byword. They were laughing at our people, man, right? And you see when when we start breaking out facts, that devil had to sliver away. She didn't want it. She didn't want no. She didn't want a real conversation, right? Right? And that's what we come out here to do. We come out here to bring our people facts. But y'all want to do this? Read what you got, King Matthew seven and six. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 6. Come on up. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Unto the who? Unto the dogs. Okay, so these other nations, the women, the men, they're all dogs according to the Bible. Right? According to the Most High God, they're all devils. They're all dogs. Right? Read that again, brother, because this is the problem of our people. Right. Our people literally want to give what is holy to the dogs. Right? Now you got these other people calling themselves God's chosen people. And what did you get? You got a white Messiah and a cut in the crown box. Right. right? That's checkmate. Come on, huh? Give not that which is holy unto the door. Hey, hey, look, the Bible says that the law is holy. Right? So y'all gave your laws, you gave your statutes and commandments to the dogs, man. Right? 
And the Most High is disgusted with you. Why? Because you gave that which was holy to another nation, more importantly to your own enemy. Right. right? These enemies came up here and called themselves Jews, called themselves Christians, called themselves God's chosen people, and then they have something called replacement theology that allows them to be a spiritual Israelite. Right. I gotta wake up in these last days. Right? Give me uh, Ecclesiastes. You got a whole precept? Yeah, I got it. Bring it up. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7. Come on. Be not deceived. That's what I want. Come on. God is not mocked. What? God is not mocked. Hey, look, the scripture says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Right? The Most High, y'all mock the Most High by doing what? By mocking his people. By mocking the prophets. Right? Our women and our men are coming up missing or dead every single day because y'all mock the men of the Lord from this coast all the way over to the west coast. And everywhere in America, right? When y'all mock the men of the Lord that's teaching, y'all mock the most high. We don't care. Right. For whatsoever a man soweth, uh -huh. that shall he also reap. And that goes not just for the other nations, but that goes for the black man as well. Right? You come out here and you sow calamity, you sow adulterous, you sow uh, 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 wickedness, you sow lies and deceit and calamity and vitriol and hatred for your own brother, hatred for your own sister, you're going to receive the same thing, right? And they're going to, they can try to tell if they want to, right? They can try to come over here and, and, and try to get people off the street, but we're going to teach this word. We're going to teach this word till they get us up out of here, right? Why? Because this is ordained by the Most High. Give me Isaiah 58 and 1. Give me that. Isaiah 58 and 1. And read it loud, brother, right? Give me Matthew 22 and 8. We was chosen to come out here and do this, man. Read what you got. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. Come on. Yeah. Cry aloud. Do what? Cry aloud. What we got to do? Cry, Cry aloud. Hey, the Most High God told the so-called black man, Hispanic, and Native American man to do what? Cry aloud. We got to come out here and cry aloud. That's we right. got to come out here and cry aloud and make the truth be known. Because the Bible says the truth will set you free. That's right. Y'all just got a minute to hear the word? Y'all love God? Right? We just love ourselves. That's what it comes down to. Self-loving. Self-imaging. Loving thyself and do what thy will mentality. Right? We got to come out of the spirit of wanting to do everything for our own damn selves. Right? right? We got to start working for the most high God. We got to start doing the will of the Father. Right? We don't. Spare not. Come on. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Like a what? Like a trumpet. Hey, the Bible said to come out, cry aloud, spare not, and lift up yeah. thy voice like a trumpet. And we got to tell the devil to his face that you are going into captivity. Right? The so-called white boy will be in the cotton fields right. doing all types of labor right. all times of the day. That's right? right? You better get your body, your body together, buddy. Right? Get your body together, buddy, because right. we are not going to take no ease on you, brother. That's right. We're not going to lighten up, man, because they didn't lighten up for our people right. Right. when they had five-year-olds out there picking cotton. Right. right? When they had young girls out there doing dishes. When they had our young kids warming the feet of the so-called white man. Right. right? When they used our children for alligator bait. Right? They used our for so you can get a leather belt and leather shoes. Right? Read on. And show my people their transgression. Their what? Their, their transgressions. transgressions. So now we got to tell you about your transgressions. Our women coming out here with no clothes on. Right. Right? Getting kidnapped by the day. Right. Our young men are getting shot down by the day. Right? And all y'all want to do is pop pills and drink damn liquor all damn day. Man. Right. Right? Being a damn adulterer. Being a damn whoremonger. Right? Being a... You can come on. You're looking at this? What do you think about that? Right. No, not that. What about that? What about what about this this black this young black man that was hung on trees by your people? What do you think about that? Right. You don't know? Now, if I had the Holocaust up here, would you have a whole lot to say about that? If I had six million Jews that was up here, you know, a hundred million black men was killed by the hands of your people. Right. right. Bring it up. Right. Six million versus a hundred million. Right. And that's the ones that we can count. It's way more than that. People are people. People to people, right? Yeah. And what about it? What about that? What should happen? He bugged up. Right? Can you show me where black men had your people like this? So what do you mean people to people? We didn't do this. Right. Your people did this, right? Right. Did I do that? No, I'm saying your people. Don't get mad. I'm just yeah. speaking facts. You can't get mad at facts. Right. 
You seem like a smart man, right? I am. You seem like analytics is part of your, your, your expertise. Hey, get out, Drake. Get so out. What, what about facts? facts? What about facts? Why are you getting mad when I talk about facts? Right. What are the facts? The fact is, your people did this to our people. That's right. Now, what do you think of? You still haven't told them what you thought about it's it. It's my people. What's your nationality? German. German, right? Oh, you know the Jay. Germans had the hand in the slave trade as well? The American slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade, where Germany has gotten so much money off the oppression of our people. Did you know that? Confound it. Give me Psalm 97 and 7. Bring it out! Psalm 97 and 7. Give me that. <laughs> you say you want some wisdom? Hey, let's get a most high hand, right? Hey, because we, we actually uh, come out here and teach the word to our people. Right? Give me that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 97, verse 7. Say we're racist because we're spitting facts, right? And haters, right? You see how the, the so-called white man and white woman don't like actual facts? Right. Right? Everybody loves facts until it comes out on them. When egg is on your face, now it's a problem. Right. Right? When egg is on your face, now it's a problem. Everything goes by numbers. Right. Everything goes by facts. But when it comes down to actual facts with our people, now all of a sudden it's a problem. Right. Right? Right? The devil, when, they, when the devil sees what's going on in his face, he gets mad. Right. Right? right? It's all in your voice. Hold on. You're not running things. You're not. We're not. We're really not teaching you. We're really not. It's not for you. Right. You just stopped. You, you just stopped. If you're not teaching them, because there's cameras right here. We edify our people. It's not about you, white man. It's not about you, white man. It's about the people on the camera. That's right. Right? It's about the camera. It's not about you. Right? You're right. You're not white. You're a dog according to this Bible. Give me Matthew 15 24. Read that. Out. The book of Psalms 97. Come on. Confounded be all they. What? Confounded be all they. What's this devil? Confounded be all they. Hey, confounded are they. When you start putting facts out there, they become what? Confounded be all they. Hey, confounded are they. Now give me Isaiah 14. Right, let's start at verse 1. And we're going to slow roll this thing into verse 21. And we're going to show you. Right, you say you want some scriptures? Let's give it to him. Because sometimes you got to give the devil his judgment according to the Bible. Now, according to the Bible, your nationality is not German. According to the Bible, you would be an Edomite, according to this book right here. Now, you don't see Germany in here. You see Edom, and you see Israel. We're Israelites, and you're Edomites. That's right. right. Now, give me that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. Bring it out. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Have mercy on who? On Jacob. On, who? on Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Esau, right? I mean, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Salakia, my bad. Right? Jacob's name was changed to Israel. You're Esau. You're not Jacob. You're not Israel. You're not God's chosen according to the Bible. We don't. And will yet choose Israel. And what? And will yet, yet choose Israel. Come on. And set them in their own land. Because this is not our own land. Our land goes back to the Levant. Our land goes back to Israel. Right. Yasha Allah. Come on. And the strangers. And the strangers. And the strangers. And the strangers. The other nations. Come on. Shall be joined with them. And they're going to be joined with us, right? Is it going to be harmony? Is everybody going to live kumbaya moment? Let's find out. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Come on. And the people shall take them. And what? And the people shall take them. We're going to take your nation. Come on. And bring them to their place. And bring them to our place. Come and on. the house of Israel. The house of who? The house of Israel. The house of Israel. Come on. Shall possess them. Now, what? You sound like a smart man. What does possession mean? If I possess something. What does that mean? Confounded, right? What does possession mean? What's confounded? What does possession mean? Your ass is confounded. Confounded Conf confound is the, the look you have on your face. That's confounded right. by definition. If I can look up confounded and put a picture, it's your face I'm right there. I'm asking you, I'm what is a possession? You're calling evil. I'm not I didn't call you evil. I'm asking a question. What is your, I called your people evil. It's a difference. Unless you fit the bill, unless you fit the bill, then you very well might be evil. But I'm asking you a question. What is, I'm an Israelite. What is your possession? What, is the, what does it mean to be a possession? What do you mean have I been to Israel? I'm asking a question. I'm asking a question. I'm asking a question. I'm asking a question. What does it mean to be possessive? Read on, huh? 
and shall possess them. And shall possess them. He knows what possession means. Possession is this right here. Right. Possession is what the German had our people doing. Right. Possession is what the so-called white man had our people in. Chains, right? Had us over there in cotton fields. Had us over there picking cotton for you to be coming to come out here and breathe American air. This is not your land. Right. This out. land goes back to the Native American. And how'd you right. get this land? You did it by bloodshed, by lies and blood and shedding shed titties, right? Bring it out. We know how. And shall possess them in the land of the Lord. In the land of the Lord is the it of Israel. We're going to have these other nations in captivity. Thus said the Most High God. This is right. facts. If you don't agree with the Bible, then if you don't agree with the, then you don't agree with the Bible. Right. It's very clear, right? Come on. For servants and handmaids. Now, what does it mean to have somebody in possession for servants and handmaids? We don't. I, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. Now, we were your captives, were we not? We were your captives, right? The Bible's divided. I'm not trying. No, we're not coming together. Because when we came together with y'all, y'all had us in captivity. That's right! I would never come in together with you. Because your people are the biggest liars and the biggest devils on this earth. I told you. I'm out here for my people and my right, people only. Right. I told you when you walked up, you can just go. You're no, you're not. You're dead, no, you're dead. not. You're this is the devil, right? The de even your dog is scared. Right. Why? Because the authority of the Lord is coming out here That's and right. teaching his word and truth and sincerity. What is that? Stop! Why are we coming out here with power? And That's even right. your dog knows what's going on. It's time for you to follow your dog we're and get up the block. That's we right. Know, I and they shall rule. No, you're not. You're not God's all people. We're not God's all people. No. No. Prove it. Show me a scripture. Show me a scripture. Because we're just showing you right here that he's going to have us rule over your people. So how can your people be God's chosen people? Right. right? Well, we are God's chosen. And we want to be a slave in our kingdom. Make it make sense. Show me a scripture that supports what you want. That's right. Because all you're giving me is religion. That's all you're giving me is your, your pseudo religion. Right. Your dogmatic religion. That's all you're giving me. Show me in the Bible, book, chapter, verse, that God loves your people. That is dogmatic religion. You're no, I'm giving you truth for the Bible because your, your, your pastor has never told you about Isaiah 14 and 1. Give me verse 21. Same chapter. Verse 21. It's going to get bloody. It's going to get even more bloody. Prepare slaughter. What? Prepare slaughter. Prepare slaughter. What we got to do? Prepare slaughter. The Bible said prepare slaughter. That is mass killing. Come on. For his children. For his children. Read. For the iniquity of their fathers. Of their what? Of their fathers. Now, you came out here and you said, what did I do? It ain't about what you did because I didn't do anything to come in captivity. I didn't do anything to come out here and call myself three-fifths of a human, right. right? I didn't come out here to America and choose to be in bondage and captivity and slavery, but guess what? I took it like a man, and I came out here and got myself out of that. Right. So it was time for you to take it like a man and do what? It said prepare slaughter for who? For, for his children. children. For his children, right? Come on. For, for the iniquity, iniquity of their, their fathers. fathers. For the sins and the bloodshed and the broken treaties of your fathers. That's right. Your foremothers and forefathers have, have wrote, written a check that you can't cash. Right. Stop right there. Stop right there. You good right there. You good right there. Read on. That they do not rise uh -huh. nor possess the land. He said he wanted a scripture and we got your captivity. You got your judgment. That's so you can go ahead and get up the block. Go ahead and get up the block, man. Right? Hey, look, when you can, yeah, let's get the classic. Read on, huh? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 9. And hey, look, I gave him a chance. I said, just go ahead and go. I didn't even want to deal with him. Right. Yeah, I mean, what's up with the dog, right? Even the dog was scared, right? But what's, what's, what's funny is, look, and this is, and this is well, real quick, real quick, real quick. This is how you got to deal with these other nations. Because he asked us, what are we out here for then? I really didn't want to talk to him. Right. It wasn't about him. It's about the camera. It's about our people that subscribe to our channel. That's right. But since you wanted a scripture, we had to give him his captivity and his judgment. Right. right? I like that. And look, he could have got away quick because remember, he was coming this way. God. I don't know why it always works this way, but they go this way mm -hmm. and they stand around and they go back the same way they came from. Right? I right. thought you was going this way, but these scriptures cut like a two-edged sword. Now he's dizzy. He's spinning. He don't know which way is which. Right. He don't know which way is up. Confounded. Right? Read that out. There's the book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Come on. He that leadeth into captivity shall, what? shall go into captivity. Shall, what? shall go into captivity. So who he that leadeth the captivity 
shall go into captivity. This is a precept to show you that all nations are going to come under the authority and under the iron rod of the so-called black man and Hispanic man that's been obedient to God's word, being obedient to God's commandments, being just in his judgments, right? Being just in his judgments as well, right? Read on. He that killeth with the sword uh -huh. must be killed with the sword. And the so-called white man and, and all these other nations has, has killed our people by the sword, right? I, I believe Christopher Columbus said, I didn't let my sword down not one time. Right. There was so much killing that Christopher Columbus did. He said, I did not let my yeah. sword down one time. Yeah. Brother, what's your nationality, brother? You having a good time out here? Right? He don't care. He having a good time, right? Get up. Right? But our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. He don't even he don't even know who he is in these days. Right. He has no clue who he is. But all he knows is just put that smile on and walk down the street with that white girl. Right. Right? Give that which is holy to the dogs. Right? Our men are simplistic people, man. Right, give me Isaiah 1 and 3. Right, finish that up. Come. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Uh -huh. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Hey, didn't we tell that dog we was going to have this block to ourselves? Right. When right. we came up here, didn't we tell her you're going to get off the block? Right. right, and by the spirit of the Most High God, her ass is off the block by Shema Mashiach to have a shot. Right? right, this is our block, man. We come out here and teach the word and truth and sincerity, man. Right. We're not out here for no other thing but our people, right? We don't. That's it. Give me Lamentations 421. Read what you got. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Come on. The ox knoweth his owner. Come on. And the ass his master's crib. Come on. But Israel doth not know. Hey, the Bible says that the dumb animal, the ox, the dumb animal, the ass, knows everything that they have to do. They know where to go. They know who, who, who governs them, who controls them, who feeds them. But the Bible also says that Israel does not know who they are. Right? Our people do not know. Shalom, shalom, brother. All right, read on. My people doth not consider. Our people don't even consider, right? And it's time for our people to separate from these oppressors. Separate from our own enemy because they have nothing to do with you. Right. It's time for the black man to start loving the black woman again. That's right. Right. It's time for the Hispanic man to love the Hispanic woman again. Right. It's time for the Native American man to love his woman again. Right. And stop trying to be like the so-called white man. The white man is good for nothing. That's right. Like the Bible says the white man is a waste. That's, That's why right. they call him Esau. Right, his name is Esau because he's a waste. Right. Right? They call him Edom because he's red. Right? This is all biblical facts. Give me that in uh, Lamentations 417. Right. Bring it out. That's the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 21. Yep. Rejoice and be glad, uh -huh. O daughter of Edom. Okay, so the Bible is telling you to live your life, white man. Right? To have your fun. Right. Have a good time in America, white man. Right? Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Right? The so-called Edomite, have your good time, man, because you're about to go into slavery. You're going into captivity right. sooner than later, man. Yeah. Every single day that passed by is a day closer to your captivity and a day closer for our redemption by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Right. right? Read on. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, uh -huh. that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass and that goes into the cup of affliction, right? The cup of affliction is going back to the so-called white man. The cup of affliction is, hey, brother, you got to get out, brother, and come in your nationality, brother. Right? You see that? And it seems like they all got the same look, right? All praises. Yeah, we talked to the sister before. This ain't the time, sis. We talked to her before, yeah. All right, well, look, you might not have tomorrow. Hey, look, you look, you might not have tomorrow. So what better time in the day? You might not have tomorrow, right? That's pride, right? You can't, you can't, you can't number your days and say, "Well, I have tomorrow," right? That's a that's a scoffer, right? You got to deal with the demon scoffer because Eve was also a scoffer, right? Yeah, yeah, having a good time, right? But watch this. Read that again, brother. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, uh -huh. that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Uh -huh. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. Hey, hey sis, you got to put some clothes.
clothes on. It's not it's not that type of party today, right? I see, yes. Our people gotta come back and put their clothes on. Our women gotta be more shamefaced and sober in their spiritual right and spirituality. Right? They get mad, they get mad, right? But 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 my question is this: if someone treats you like a whore, you are how you present yourself. Right. If you present yourself as a whore, you're gonna be treated as such. Right? right? Give me uh Sarvac 19. Give me Sarvac 1929. Come on, bring it up. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 24. Come on. Man's goings are of the Lord. What did the Bible say? Man's goings are of the Lord. Hey, so look, man's goings are of the Lord. So you find yourself in somebody's basement, right? As a woman, right? Your cell phone ain't got no reception. You got a headache and you're, you're knocked out with some type of roofie, right? The Bible says that man's goings are of the Lord, right? You sow what you reap. Right. right? Our women got to come back and, and not be so quick to be... Uh, um, Offended when somebody tells you to cover up. A man is telling you to cover up. What does that mean? If a man is telling a woman to cover up, that means he means it, right? Because most men tell you to take the clothes off, but not these brothers up here, right? Our men is telling our, our women to cover up, especially in these last days, right? Read that again. Man's goings are of the Lord. Uh -huh, come on. How can a man then understand his own way? How can you understand your own? How you know you're going to be up tomorrow? How you know you got another day, right? right? How? You don't know that, right? Only the, most, only the most high knows if you got tomorrow to live, right? But the pride of our people is, is at an astronomical high. How do you have tomorrow and you in captivity? How you know you got tomorrow when you can get gunned down by the police tonight? You can get kidnapped in a white van tonight. It's happening, right? Read that, Psalm 8, 19, 29. There's a book of Sarai, chapter 19, verse 29. Come on. A man may be known by his look. Hey, the Bible said a man may be known by his look. Right. So our women coming out here with no clothes on, and when we calling you all types of names, not we, but these other men in the club calling you all types of names and treating you like you're less than, right? right. The Bible tells you why. Read it again, brother. A man may be known by his look. Hey, you treat people how, you teach people how to treat you, right? Our people have taught the other nations how to treat them, right? And our women, right, on the sub level, they show people, they show men, and they show other women how to treat them, right? It's too cold to have our women with their clothes all off, right? It's too cold to have your, your, your bosom exposed, and you're trying to find a man. You're trying to find, you're trying to find a life partner out here in the club scene, right? It don't work like that. Why is it the, so, the, like the man dresses to, to the occasion? Right? If you look at men, we dress to the occasion. Right. But it's always our women that want to show their nakedness and they want respect. How do you show respect? I mean, how do you give respect to someone that don't respect themselves? Right. Right? right? And how does the black man get respect that we don't even respect ourselves? The black man don't respect himself, so how can we also give respect back to the Most High? Because man's going to the Lord. And you may be known by your look according to Cyrus 1929. Yeah, we judge by the cover. Yeah, we can tell you to get that homosexuality spirit off you. We can see it, brother. We can see it, but the most important thing is coming back to your law. We don't. A man may be known by his look, uh -huh. and one that have understanding by his countenance. See that? So I know a brother that knows the law, because he got the fringes on, right? He got his beard on, you know, oiled up and shining, right? Right. All right, so what we out here doing, we out here telling our people, I'm going to step down in the next few minutes. Let me get uh, Syrac, uh, uh 3, verse uh, Salaki. Let me get, um, you right, let me get the book of uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. All right, let's get that. Come on, bring it up. This book of Cle this book Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 20. Come on. Before judgment, examine thyself. You said what? Before judgment, examine thyself. And we got our people get judgment, right? They get judgment every day. Our people are being judged every single day. Every murder, every killing, every missing child, it all goes back to judgment of the Most High God, oh, right? Man. All these things that happen that's calamity to our people, right? Now, when you're going through that, you must examine yourself on why this is happening, right? Read. And in the day of visitation, uh -huh. thou shalt find mercy. See that? In the day of visitation, you're going to find mercy. Why? Because you examine yourself. Right? Read on. Humble thyself before thou be sick. Uh -huh. And in, in the time of this of sin, show repentance. See that? We got to show repentance at the times of sins. We got to show repentance for the so-called black man. 
Right? And these other nations must go out there and tell the black man that you're not three-fifths of a human. If you're really sincere on how you feel about the so-called black man, tell them that they're God's chosen people. Tell them to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Why? Because the, our people are so twisted that they'll listen to another nation before they talk to us. Right? We have better dialogue with other nations than our own people. Right? So let's get that out, finish it out. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. 12 verse 13 come on let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter uh -huh. fear god what fear god so our job is to come out here and tell the black man to fear the most high god right how do you fear god read and keep his commandments fear the most high god by keeping his laws statutes and commandments you fear the most high god by putting clothes on right you fear the most high god by putting your fringes on you fear the most high god by keeping his feast days and high holy days right you fear the most high god by fleeing from the nation of Babylon, right? And all this idolatry and all this wickedness, right? And thinking that the so-called white man is God on this earth, right? Come on. For this is the whole duty of man. And the whole duty of the Israelite man is to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. With that, I want to give all praise to the Most High God. I'm going to give it to the next powerful dynamic speaker. We say, Prophet Shalom!